Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and I have a interesting kind of week this week regarding status updates of Signalis Multiplayer Mod. For those who don't know, the Signalis Multiplayer Mod is a mod that's working on adding complete co-op to Signalis. It's currently been going quite well, we've been making heavy progress over the last couple of weeks, and that progress is continuing into this week. There's a bunch of new features that I have added in the newest build, but interestingly, as I noted, we have an interesting week, uh, none of them have actually been sufficiently tested. So I can't say that this week is one where I'm like, oh, these are new features that are in the game, we're good, these are working. They're more like I have worked on a theoretical implementation of them, but due to testing, we haven't been able to really be able to know if these work. So I'm going to go through what I've been working on, and uh, also I'm going to go into how you can test, because we need more testers. The inability to test the mod is probably the one thing that's holding it back the most at the moment. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. First things first, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the community and I was like, yo, you know if I added enemies, it would take me like four weeks. I was like, so we can either do enemies or we can do... Uh, bullying normal bulls for DET. I mean, uh, LOV. And y'all were like, okay, do LOV, you know, keep the progress moving. Uh, enemies would take too long. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So then yesterday I got like hyper fixated and I hammered out the entire code for enemies in one sitting. That was not four weeks. I, I'm not entirely sure what occurred to compel me to make such a dreadful decision, but I'm going to talk about the intricacies of how the enemies are handled because I feel like this is something that is. Uh, very interesting to a, to a lot of people. Uh, I've had tons of comments ever since this project was announced going, well, how do you plan on handling this? And I feel like this is one where I can kind of talk and people won't get bored about it. So the key idea of an enemy is we have to think about what needs to be measured regarding enemies. Do you, a lot of games uh, are run server-side, but our mod is going to be peer-to-peer. -peer. What that means is that like 95% of data we don't care about, simply put, because that data does not actually matter. I don't exactly care if the Yule is, you know, spinning around on the Z axis. It doesn't exactly matter. Uh, it doesn't affect the other player. I don't exactly care if the Yule 14 billions in has something enabled that lets it revive. Because, and the reason I don't care, is because the data we feed the game between peer to peer is the exact same. And that's all that really matters. If I tell both games that the Yule is taking 150 points of damage, then both games will revive the Yule at the exact same time. Both games will have the Yule have the Z-axis be the exact same at the exact same time. And that's essentially what we've done. So the first thing we measure is, is this, is this Yule alive? It's not hard to check that. You can simply, when needing to figure out if the Yule is alive, run a Boolean -like check on it. Just be like, yo, uh, you go through the code, you're like, yo, you alive, homie? And if the homie is alive, then we can just output to the uh, message sender that, yeah, the homie is alive. But what we really care more about is if it's dead. If it's dead, then we can kill it. And how do you kill an enemy? You know, do we do a dash kill in the chat like this is Minecraft? Essentially, you can set the enemy's HP to zero. It's not hard to do in the code, and once you do that, it dies. And that's what I kind of mean by we don't need to have every single data point the exact same. We can kind of just mimic the exact same conclusions here. If HP is zero, HP is zero. It doesn't matter how HP is zero. What matters is that HP is zero. And before anyone chipes up and starts going, well, then you're missing if HP is zero, like how does it get to zero? Well, well, don't worry about that. Because HP outside of zero is also something we're measuring here. We're also measuring is the enemy's HP, how much is it going down? How much damage is it taking? How much change in life is it having? If the change in life is greater than zero, then we can send that as a message. Basically, to make this bespoke in English, if your one hits you and then you shoot it in the face, we can send a message going, yo, we just shot this Yule in the face. We don't need to say we shot it. We just say, here's how much damage that shot did. Because if we say you shot it, then we have to run all sorts of math to make sure the math on both sides is the same, which is just measure instead how much damage it took, how much of a pain it took from you emptying your 40 cal into its face. So the next and the final piece of data we run here is which player is it closer to? 
So we got, is this is this thing alive? How much HP does it have? Why is the last thing we're measuring? What enemy is it? What player is it closer to? Why aren't we measuring, for example, its exact position, its exact rotation, its exact blah, blah, blah. The reason is math works the same way regardless of what you do. What I mean by that is if I do 1 plus 1, it will always equal 2. If I do 1 plus 55, it will always equal 56. And what that means is if I set that there are two player destinations and that one of those player destinations is the target for the Yule, the Yule will always calculate based off of whatever complex logic Rose Engine is using for pathfinding the exact same way to the player. To make that a little bit more comprehensive, if you are five steps away from the Yule, it doesn't matter who, what the hell is going on in the Yule's brain, the Yule will always walk towards you the exact same way. And we can use that logic to our advantage here. And because of that, we only really need to tell the Yule which player is closer. We don't need to tell the Yule 962 facts about its grandfather. We can just say, this player is closer, here's where the player is, go to the player. And the Yule will work out the rest for us. And that's really a massive benefit. It means that a lot of gameplay aspects that we would otherwise have to manually code don't have to be manually coded which is why this only took one sitting instead of four weeks. I do have to add the little caveat here of there's a chance this doesn't work. There's a chance we have to add more. But at principle, this is not a bad idea. If we have to add two, three, four, maybe five more bullions, sure. But the less information that we manually handle as the mod, the better this is going to run. And that is going to be really the prevailing philosophy here in this uh, enemy system. The next thing to talk about is players dying. So I play a decent amount of co-op games when I was younger. I don't really do it at the moment, but when I was younger, I played a decent amount of co-op games. And there's nothing more frustrating in those co-op games that I'd be doing great. Like I'm Mario, I'm jumping around, and then my sister would sprint straight off the side of the fucking map 20 times, and then suddenly my extra HP is down to zero. And it was splendid. I adored dying from actions that had nothing to do with my own. So originally, I was going to make it that if any player died, both players died. Because it's extremely easy to code that. It just goes, we just check your player's HP. If it equals to zero, oh well, everybody dies. Set everybody's HP to zero. But that's not fair. And that would be extremely frustrating to everyone. And I'd probably get like 400 messages in my DMs every day saying it's a bug. So instead of dealing with that, what I've instead created is an odd little system of kind of immortality. If the player HP goes below three, what we do is we send out this Boolean message to the other player. We go, yo, homie is low right now. Homie is not good. And what we do at the same time, though, is we set its HP to static at three. What this means is that even if you are, you're at three HP, if you get hit by the Falk Mega Blast, you are dead. But what we want is that to not happen, because if that happens, a whole bunch of code kicks in, a whole bunch of shit happens, and that would be really bad for us. And we don't really want all that happening. So instead, you're going to be technically immortal for a little bit. You're going to technically not be able to die at all. You're just going to have 3 HP. Now, anyone going, well, that's not fair. That's going to be awful. 3 HP makes your entire screen vibrate violently and grow bright red. It's not a fun experience. You're, you're going to be stuck at 3 HP. That's not enjoyable at all. But... What you can do is if you heal, you're going to be able to jump over the 3 HP threshold, begin having normal HP again. But what happens if both homies have 3 HP? Well, that's when actual death occurs. If both players have less than 10 HP, it kills both players, because that's a fair statement. And I feel like that's a, this is a fair system. If both players are dead, then they're both dead. It really requires you to work with your duo, coordinate, be like, yo, bro, I'm low. Let me sprint away from the Yule. And if both players are not low, then they're not low. Maybe we have to adjust some of the numbers, change some of the things later. I don't know. We'll look at it. But I feel like this is better than the alternative. And it's nice that we're able to get some of these really difficult constructs at least started, most of the work done on them, uh, long before we are even at the halfway point regarding bullions, which really means that we can just start focusing on hammering out the rest of the bullions and really finishing the mod. It's been an exciting project, and hopefully I'll have some more major updates next week. But as I said a lot earlier in the video, 
all these ideas are cool in concept, but um, we don't have testers. At the current moment, there are probably two people, maybe three, who can test CDMP. That is a very, very low amount. Um, and it basically means that if anything happens in the lives of any of those three people, testing grinds to a halt. Without testing, I can't properly figure out if things are working. And if things aren't working, I can't figure out how to fix them. Playing around in code only gets you so far. You know, sometimes the issue is, is a simple thing, like a number change or something. But you need tests. Uh, the average CDMP build, for example, takes 26 different uh, builds to work. Those 26 builds need somebody to test all 26 builds. And at the current moment, that burden has fallen almost entirely on one to two people. That is part of what's taking this project so long. Yes, it's a big scale project, but having so little testing really is making the big scale even bigger. If you'd like to change that metric, you know, maybe make a three into a five, it's not that hard to test CDMP. CDMP setup really only requires you set up Hamachi, you set up Melon Loader, and you download the mod. If you ever have any questions about any of those three steps, I have a Discord, and you can ask me there, and I will walk you through it. The more testers we have, the better. And I am deeply excited about this project and its future prospects, but that future will be farther away the less testers we have. And the more we have, the closer it comes. Either way, it's going to happen, but I think we'd all prefer something sooner rather than later. Finally, to close out this video, I'd like to give a thanks to my channel members, Leeks and Derek Sai. Amazing people. Help support make videos like this possible and crazy-ass projects like this possible. Um, but aside from that, I don't really have anything else for y'all today. This has been Christopher Beast. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.